In 2015, Cultural and Creative Industries Federation of South Africa reported that Shagazulu, the miniseries whose production budget was $12 million, had amassed a staggering $500 million on a global scale. The series gained massive success has been the most repeatedly screened miniseries ever shown in the United States. It shaped and transformed people's perception of tribal history in South Africa. But despite the massive success of the series, its main actor, Henry Tele, the man who perfectly portrayed Shagazulu, died a very lonely and poor man. This is a story of corruption, power and greed. How the mighty exploits the vulnerable, amassing fortunes while leaving them helpless and abandoned. So I started on stage as Shaka, not knowing that later on I was going to be the big Shaka on the screen. And I'm happy it all happened that way. So it's apartheid South Africa 1985 and you are Joshua Sinclair, a multi-talented American writer, producer, actor and director. After immersing yourself in months of dedicated research about the Zulu culture, history and tradition, you emerge with a powerful, our aspiring novel centered around the legendary figure of Shaka Zulu. The impact of your novel resonates widely, capturing the attention of the South African Broadcasting Corporation, the country's national broadcaster. Recognizing the immense potential, they approach you with an exciting offer to adapt your remarkable work into a captivating miniseries. Having been a medical doctor working with tropical diseases, working in India with Mother Teresa, Sister Rosa and various other regions in Africa, especially in South Africa, you see it as a chance to narrate the captivating tale of Shaka Zulu to both the local communities and global audience presenting it in a contemporary and engaging manner. So, you say yes. So, the South African Broadcasting Corporation, SABC, commissions $12 million for the production of the series. Now, this is where it gets a little bit shady. See, the SABC was a state-owned broadcaster and at that time, the apartheid government was in the midst of an international cultural boycott. It was facing widespread international condemnation due to its policy of apartheid, a system of racial segregation and discrimination. As part of the effort to oppose apartheid, many countries and organizations initiated cultural boycotts against South Africa. These boycotts aimed to isolate the country culturally, economically and politically in order to pressure the government to dismantle apartheid. This boycott meant that there were restrictions on the screening or broadcasting of South African productions overseas and reduced access to international collaborations in the arts and entertainment industry. If the SAPC were to produce a film or series, it wasn't going to get the proper attention it would. To solve this, the SAPC had to find a way to bypass the cultural boycott. They had to get someone to appear as the producer. And they approached Harmony Gold. Before Shagazulu, Harmony Gold was just a suit of five rooms in a low-rent building, meaning that this deal with the SAPC was basically the holy grail they needed. So Harmony Gold said yes. The plan was this, SAPC gives Harmony Gold the $12 million to produce the show, and through the Swiss bank, Harmony Gold would give SAPC back the money. 
but that is not how it panned out. Amoni Gold took the money and they appeared as the producers with Frank Agrama as the associate producer of the series without any mention of the SAPC. The show was shot in South Africa and had local actors feature in the show. It made Henry Tele its leading actor playing the legendary Shaka Zulu. The show was a big hit. It gained a massive audience both locally and globally. It became one of the most repeatedly screened miniseries ever shown in the United States. People loved it. It made Henry Tele an international star. The show made a staggering $500 billion in profit. With all that done, Harmony Gold had to keep up its end of the bargain, give back the $12 million to the SAPC and pay the real producers and crew. It didn't. Joshua Sinclair was supposed to get 8% of the profit, which was about $14 million. It didn't. Harmony Gold through the Swiss bank paid the SAPC part of the money, not all. A lot of it stayed in the Swiss bank. It never made it to South Africa. It is reported that Harmony Gold kept 80% of the profit. It used the money to do some sales and put its name on the map. It made Agrama rich overnight. Many people thought Harmony Gold had produced Shagazulu and had paid for it. When in fact it didn't, Harmony Gold was acting as a proxy. Frank Agrama, the head of Harmony Gold, later got arrested for tax fraud on his other works. He was sentenced to three years imprisonment, though he did not serve it. Joshua Sinclair reported that he only made $150,000 out of the series. From the $500 million, he made only $150,000. The SAPC used his charity affiliations as an excuse not to give him his money. If the writer and co-director only made $150, how much do you think the actors made? I can't even begin to imagine. Their sole gain from it was fame and popularity. However, it is important to note that fame and popularity alone cannot provide the basic needs of a family. Henry Pelle was never a professional actor. He was a professional footballer. Due to his striking resemblance and physical appearance, he was invited to audition for the role of Shara Zulu in the stage production. He delivered such a remarkable performance that he was chosen to reprise his role in the 1986 miniseries. His portrayal was so convincing that many local people even began to see him as the embodiment of the legendary Shara Zulu himself. While he did secure some other acting opportunities afterward, it was his portrayal of Shara Zulu that truly propelled him to fame and earned him widespread recognition. Sadly, due to financial instability, he had to leave his suburban home and move back to his township home where he spent the last days of his life. He is reported to have been a far cry from the regal king he immortalized on screen. He is said to have died a poor man. Of his death, Simon Makashoa brought on the sword in life. Shagazulu the TV series brought awareness and happiness to many of us. The past is gone with its sweet song. Fele died a very lonely poor man. He was robbed, lied to and belittled by those filmmakers. They made millions from his talent but he did not benefit. Even our own media, people ignored his talent. They didn't treat him with respect and never honored him with that covetous lifetime achievement award that some undeserving individuals have been given. Now that he has passed on, people pretend to revere him. Pele was probably a bitter man because life did not treat him well.